Hey everyone, uh, here's the second video uh, in our course, uh, Remix Music, Art, and Culture. I'll um, try to get this up uh, pretty quickly for you all so you have a chance to get onto the reading and the, the video. So here we go. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about your assignments for this week, uh, the texts that you're going to be looking at, and uh, I'm going to close talking a little bit about uh, why uh, this is a course I wanted to put together. First, the post. Uh, the post is going to be the first thing that's due. Uh, you'll note it's due on Wednesday at 10 p.m. Uh, this is going to be the first one that you do. You're going to have one due every week. Uh, the other major thing that you're going to be doing this week is participating in the discussion. So uh, all of the posts that you see up there, fair game to participate. Uh, we're looking for at least 300 words by Friday at 10 p.m. Uh, so what goes in a post? Uh, the goal for our post is really to give you an opportunity to explore some of the topics in your own way. Uh, they're about two to 300 words, somewhere in there. If it's less than 200, you're really not going to be getting that much in there. Uh, if you're going more than 300, you're probably <laughs> doing too much. But uh, it's a little softer cap on the 300. Uh, but definitely try to get over 200. Uh, the Posts should definitely engage with uh, course discussions. Uh, you can put other posts. There's a category up there for social, so if you want to say hi to people or just talk, uh, that's what that channel's for. Uh, but the posts, you want to be uh, on topic, uh, dealing with our course conversations, dealing with our course texts, and so on. So there are many different kinds of forms that a post can take. You can do uh, a post that asks a question, so you spend your 200 words uh, to 300 words, setting up the question and then asking it. You can share an example from outside of class and explain how it fits in. Maybe you saw a video on YouTube that you think is really relevant to what we're doing. Uh, you would post that video and then talk about how it fits for your 300 words. You can present a theory about Remix. Maybe some idea came up to you while you were doing last night's reading and you want to see what other people think. So spend your time, your uh, space on Google Plus uh, talking about your theory. You maybe find a passage you think is particularly interesting or you had trouble understanding or uh, you think is really off the mark or is somehow problematic. Uh, put the quotation up there and uh, ask your classmates for feedback. Yeah. Another thing I imagine you could probably do is, is uh, define a key term. So, uh, for example, when we start reading DJ Spooky, uh, he's going to talk about idiots and prostitutes, uh, but he doesn't mean them in the way that... Uh, we typically mean them when we use those words, so uh, maybe what you decide to do, the most meaningful way for you to engage with the course discussion is to try to define one of those terms. But this is really loose. It's up to you how you decide to do this, so uh, please uh, use it as a way to customize your engagement with these texts. For this week, you're going to be reading uh, three entries from the Johns Hopkins Guide to Digital Media, uh, which just came out uh, a couple, maybe a month ago. Uh, the three entries are mashup, sampling, and remix. Uh, the old, the mashup and the sampling one are by the same guy. The remix one is by uh, a different person. Uh, you'll n note that uh, the entry for remix draws really heavily on uh, the novice book that we're going to be reading later. Uh, I'm using it here. I'm having you read it here so we can have a starting point definition to move from. Uh, don't worry so much if you don't get all the details of the different kinds of remix that he's laying out. We're going to spend time uh, reading those and talking about those in more detail in, I think, week five or maybe week six. I can't remember which. Uh, the other uh, text for this week is Lawrence Lessig's remix le lecture at the Computer History Museum. Uh, it's about an hour long, uh, and it's, it's really worth uh, the full time. It, it drags a little near the end, but... Uh, I think it's really worth it, and I'll talk about that in a minute, why I think it's worth it. Uh, to find these readings, they're going to be in the Google Drive folder. I've added everyone to that folder at this point, so you should be able to access it. It should be showing up in your Google Drive. If you just go to Google Drive and find the part on the left where it talks about shared documents or documents shared with you, you should be able to find that folder. Uh, the easiest way to find it probably is just to go to the Google Plus page uh, in the uh, community description, there's a link to course documents that will take you directly to the folder. Uh, you may not be, I think you'll, that'll just allow you to view things. I don't think you'll be able to edit it, but we're not worrying about editing uh, documents right now. Uh, so those are the two things, uh, relatively short, uh, about an hour long video. 
and maybe eight pages, uh, nine pages of reading. So why this course? Uh, it's a class on remix, music, art, and culture, somehow in an English department. Uh, of course, the English department is the house for the film and digital media program, uh, which is where I come in. <laughs> uh, but why would we do a course like this? And when you're watching the, the Lessig video, uh, I think the real value of that video and the reason why I want to start with it is that it introduces a, most of the main topics, uh, issues, and concerns uh, that uh, Remix bring up as a uh, cultural object and a cultural practice. Uh, somewhere about two-thirds of the way in, he's going to make the claim that Remix is just writing, that this is writing. Uh, and he makes a pretty compelling argument for why uh, he thinks that that's so important. Uh, ultimately, he says that writing, or t traditional writing, is becoming the Latin of the day, and, and now Remix is the colloquial language, the language that uh, folks speak to each other about their own experiences with everyday life and the media that surrounds them all the time. Uh, so it's basically how people engage with culture now. So uh, some of the main topics that he's going to address are some of the main themes that sort of come out of the way he talks about Remix. Uh, it's going to be very clear that it's tied to ter technological innovations. So his earlier example was going to be a, a late 19th century example talking about uh, phonographs. Uh, then, then he's going to talk more about the digital and how that sort of changed things as well. But clearly tied to some uh, technological innovation. But there's also an aspect of it that's going to be rebellious and, and in some way threatening. Uh, he, Lawrence Lessig is a lawyer, so his angle into this is going to be through the law. Uh, so he's going to start with some uh, court cases about bootleggers. Uh, and then near the end, he's going to talk about copyright. Copyright's one of his uh, pet projects. He was uh, directly involved in the creation of uh, the Creative Commons licenses as an alternative to copyright. Uh, so it, it's an issue very dear to his heart. He's been doing other things lately, but uh, as a lawyer, he's going to be interested in those issues. But part of the reason these legal issues come up is because Remix uh, inherently challenges concepts like originality and like authorship, and in doing so also challenges concepts like identity and authority. Uh, and where it becomes threatening is where it changes uh, our relationship to culture. It, it asks questions about who gets to own culture and who has access to it. Uh, how, uh, how are we supposed to respond to culture? Do we respond re with reverence towards the uh, holistic object that is presented to us as you know, full of meaning and speaking to our reality? Or do we cut it apart and rearrange it in a way that better speaks to our experience? And then the, the but part of this, and it's, it's kind of a big but, is the remix is now becoming the norm. Uh, it's just how we interact with anything. It's how most of our media is presented to us. Uh, and also, it has some interesting resonances with how we think of ourselves and our own identities. So, uh, you'll see in the Lessig piece, he's going to be talking not about getting back to or using Remix as a way to undermine culture as a, or as a way to combat uh, hegemony. He's going to be talking about Remix uh, and what are some solutions for better integrating it into uh, the large, the larger economy? Uh, he's going to talk about hybrid economies. And so what happens to Remix when it just becomes how the economy works and it's not, uh, and it loses some of its critical function? Is there still the potential for a critical function in something like Remix now that it has become so uh, easy to do so generalized and so mainstream. So the discussion questions I'm going to put up for you in a little bit. Uh, after reading the Hopkins Guide and watching the Lessig, what now seem to be the essential or critical aspects of Remix? Uh, please uh, add your responses on Google+. Plus. I'll put a little post in there with this exact quote, uh, quotation, or this exact question. Uh, and I, I look forward to seeing what you all put as answers. Uh, that's all for today. Uh, and this will be the last video lecture for the week. Uh, please remember to do your reading for the week. Please remember to submit your post on Wednesday by 10 p.m. Uh, remember that you need to be participating in those discussions and adding at least 300 words by Friday. And uh, that's it for now. If you have any questions, uh, either send me an email or add something to the support category on Google+. Uh, thanks, y'all, and I'll see you on the forums.